We all know by now mental health is more important than ever if you take a look at last year. COVID-19 has left many people traumatized, grieving and disillusioned about the future. I'm joined by an expert in this, uh, psychiatrist Dr. Kahisho Morohania, to talk a little bit about how we can try and get uh, through all of this. Uh, Dr. Morohania, good morning to you. I think everybody, and perhaps uh, I stand alone on this, we were just hoping let's get through 2020. 2021 is going to be better. This COVID nonsense is going to be gone. Uh, but it hasn't. And February sucks, doesn't it? So how, how, are, how are people going to try and cope through this difficult time? Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning, Gareth. Yes, indeed. Uh, I, I myself was surprised at how the second wave came so soon. I think the government had been expecting it to come around March or so. And all of a sudden, it was the end of December, you know, it came, uh, came about. And there was a sudden lockdown, uh, including the, almost essentially the cancellation of Christmas and, and New Year's. And I think for a lot of people, they were not prepared for this. At least they were hoping that they will have a good Christmas. And then afterwards, you know, if it happens again, they can be prepared uh, for that. So, so, but I think people uh, don't know that these pandemics, they can actually last about two to three years. I think if you're, if you're an expert and you're immersed in the, in the literature, you would read a lot about it, so you know. But I think for a lot of people, they don't have this information. So, yes, they're hoping that 2020 will be the last year that they have to experience this. But unfortunately, it's ongoing. And I think we need to pass on the information that there may just be a third wave or even a fourth wave. I mean, we're coming into winter now. So the chances of a third wave are, going, are, are certainly there. Um, and our people have to prepare for themselves for that. I've, I've spoken to a couple of, uh, of friends and family members, uh, Dr. Marokhania, over the last couple of months when uh, a friend wants to go and see a psychiatrist or a psychologist, but they're not sure if they have a mental illness or if they're just sick and tired of COVID-19. What does someone look for, either in yourself or in a loved one, when they, you realize they actually need professional help versus uh, they're just sick and tired of COVID-19? Is there a difference that we can look out for? Yeah, no, thank, thank you for that question. I think in my experience, uh, people tend to come uh, a tad late um, when their depression has become complicated, complicated in a sense that they're starting to have self-harm ideas, so becoming suicidal or even having psychotic features. So, and if you've had depression for a very long time, for a year or two, <coughs> it becomes extremely difficult <coughs> excuse me, uh, to sort of continue to the medication we have to give you a higher dose, you have to give it for a longer period. So rather that people come early, <clears throat> uh, for example, when they're having their early symptoms. And the early symptoms could be uh, insomnia. It could be that disinter disinterest in, in activity that they normally like. Or they're sick, being sick and tired is basically fatigue or having hopelessness and helplessness. And I think these are the, the, the major, major signs of depression for us. So we'd much prefer that people come early. And the thing is that when you when you seek attention, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to see a psychiatrist. Even a registered counselor or a psychologist can help you at that point. And if after a few sessions they feel that they're not getting any headway, then they'll refer you to us, and then we can maybe uh, augment the medication with the, the management with, with drugs, basically. I suppose the problem is, and perhaps you can help uh, guide me on this, and of course uh, our viewers as well. Uh, psychiatrists aren't cheap. I mean that with respect. Psychiatrists and psychologists, it's not a cheap visit. Uh, and, and a lot of people, because of the economic situation, even in a good time, won't have the money, will they, doctor, to see a professional in a private clinic? Is the psychiatric um, uh, assistance in South Africa good at a public level? Do you, do you think people will turn to uh, the public uh, psychiatric um, facilities? Yes, yes. Uh, but even if I could just talk about even privately, uh, I think a lot of people don't know that within their medical aid um, sort of okay, they've got uh, up to even 15 sessions that they're allowed to see a psychologist, uh, a psychologist or a psychiatrist. So some people may not be aware of them. Some people may feel that only as a main member I can see a psychiatrist, but not my dependents, and that's not the case. But in the all right, Dr. Marokhania, I'm afraid I don't quite know what's happened to the signal. Looks like a, a gremlin has called, crawled into our Zoom session. It's a, a terrible shame as well, but I think we've got the crux of what to look out for. Uh, if you or perhaps a family member, a friend, a loved one is starting to show signs of self-harm and uh, beginning to show signs of depression, 
uh, do not wait until it becomes untreatable. As Dr. Kahisho Murakhania says, SA Society of Psychiatrists, go and get the help uh, now. There's nothing to be uh, ashamed of. A terrible shame as well to lose him uh, so close to the end of our conversation.